Good afternoon and welcome. I'm so excited. I think I'm more excited than most of you. We are here to honor the 2017 All-America City grade level reading finalists. We are going to hear from each community for about three minutes each. And what we'll hear is each community highlighting what makes their city and their work to promote early school success so special. Before I begin, let me ask a question. How many of you watch the Grammys? And so you all know that if you go over your time, if you go over your three minutes, you hear this lovely Grammy music. So don't make us play the music because Suzanne is ready to do that. Um, but we do want to hear from you. We're so excited for you. We're so proud of you. So we are looking forward to you sharing about your work. Are you guys ready? Yay, let's give a, an applause to all of them even before they come up. <clears throat> so first up, Quad Cities, Iowa. Good morning. In 2012, the Quad Cities was honored to be selected as one of the 14 communities to win an All-America City Award based on the grade level reading plan that we had put together, and we've spent the five years since putting that plan into action. Now, I wanna take at least part of my three minutes today to thank the people of the national campaign because they not only set us on this path, but they've been walking the path with us. And the results have been incredible. In the last five years, we created a school attendance initiative that decreased chronic absenteeism by 40%. We created a summer learning program that not only mitigated summer learning loss, it actually increased student literacy by 9% over the course of the summer. We created a whole host of school readiness initiatives, all targeted at our low-income neighborhoods. And in fall 2016, for the first time ever, a child from a low-income neighborhood in the Quad Cities was just as likely as a child from a mid- or high-income neighborhood to enter kindergarten with the skills that he or she needed to be ready to learn. Yeah. That applause doesn't come out of my time, does it? Um, it I, I, the most important thing though, that the national campaign has done for us is to help us to see that these are not three separate victories, that they're all part of a greater whole. The, the Quad Cities is a bi-state community made up of five different cities, and so anything we find that can help us align work across multiple sectors is very useful to us. So we've not only been focused for the last five years on that greater whole, we keep expanding upon it specifically. Two years after we won the All-America City Award, the group of organizations that we brought together to administer our grade level reading plan won a grant from the Lumina Foundation to increase the number of people in the Quad Cities with post-secondary degrees and certifications. And our grade level reading initiative is a core component of that project. So with third grade literacy on one end and post-secondary attainment on the other, our grade level reading initiative has blossomed into a cradle to career continuum. Two years after that, when 160 bi-state, cross-sector stakeholders came together to, among other things, increase the number of people in the Quad Cities who were ready to fill the future workforce needs of our local employers. We went to them and said the best way to accomplish that would be to increase the number of people in our low-income neighborhoods with post-secondary degrees and certifications, and the way to accomplish that would be to invest early in grade-level reading. So now that Cradle to Career Continuum is itself a core component of a quad city-wide community improvement initiative called Q2030 that's going to change life for people in the quad cities for decades to come. And it all began with that original grade level reading plan five years ago. So I, I just wanna say on behalf of every man, woman, and child in the quad cities, to Ralph, to Ron, to Suzanne, to Becky, to Hetty, to all my friends in the Iowa Coalition, to all, all, all the people involved in the national campaign, Thank you so much for what you made possible in the Quad Cities. Thank you. Next up, Newport, Rhode Island. <laughs> I'm nervous. 
Good morning, I'm uh, Tracy Westman, and I'm the principal, the proud principal of Pell, Claiborne Powell Elementary School in Newport, Rhode Island. When people think of Newport, they often think of mansions, beaches, sailing, mm -hmm. and the historic culture. What people don't realize, and I think people would be really surprised to realize about Rhode Island, let me get closer, is that we have a lot of families who struggle to feed their students, excuse me, my students, their children, and they struggle to keep a home over their head. We also have a large homeless population. 64% of our Newport public school students receive free and reduced lunch. We have 41 documented homeless students, although the number is much higher, but people are too proud to report to us. Also, over the past two years, we have doubled our ELL population, and many of the students who come to us are not literate, or are not fluent in their um, own language. So it's a big population. Four years ago, Newport made a bold move and closed all our elementary schools and combined them into one huge elementary school, state of the art, which houses oh, about 900 kids, pre-K to four. So we're kind of an anomaly in Newport, Rhode Island. There's only two schools that have that. We thought bringing all our resources together would help increase academic success in our students. What we found is after two years, we were not increasing in our EL students and our high poverty students. So what do we do? You make a plan. So we came up with a new strategic plan called One Newport, meaning it's everybody's responsibility in Newport, the community agencies and everything, to work together to educate and promote academic success of our students. Under the strategic plan came the Read by Grade 3 initiative, which is why we are here today. We are so excited to be here today. Thank goodness so many of you pioneered this program, so when we went to look for something to do to increase, we started working on truancy, early readiness, and summer learning. We're in our second year right now. Some things we've implemented in early readiness are we're partnering with our early childhood programs to provide reading readiness strategies. We're also um, hired two child outreach screeners for our pre-K students going into K. Next year at Powell, I'm excited to welcome a new group of new mothers. We're bringing them actually into the school so they can get familiar with the school and get to know it. And then we're going to help them educate. So that we're going to educate the parents so they can educate their children. On truancy, we make daily communication calls to parents, either personal or a robocall. This summer, myself as an administrator, I made home visits to some of our most truant families. A totally awesome experience, and I think it changed some Lives changed my life, changed theirs. We also feel that communication seems to be the key in fighting truancy. So we have our teachers send home quarterly report cards encouraging students to come to school. And I know I'm running out of time, but this is the best one that we do. So every month we have student of the month assemblies, you know, to promote, you know, star students, et cetera. But last year we came up with this idea. We got these Oscar trophies, they're cardboard cutouts. And so the class that has the best attendance for each grade level gets to have it in their room and put their names on it. We do drum rolls. If you ever have a chance to be in Newport during one of those assemblies, you would be like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. It's the best award, and it's really working to encourage our students. Um, we also do uh, end-of-the-year trophies for perfect attendance and quarterly certificates. Um, in regard to our summer learning, some things that we're doing is we connected with all our community-based programs. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. <laughs> And we all do common assessments, and we all our summer learning programs have reading components. So thank you very much. San Antonio, Texas, you're up. Woo! Woo! Good afternoon. I'm Peter Zanoni, Deputy City Manager with the City of San Antonio, Texas. The city consists of, one, of over 1.4 million residents, and we are a a proud city with a deep history over 300 years. We love our children and we are committed to excellence and working together to improve services. We collaborate because we believe that the success of our children is way more important than the success of our individual programs and activities. Our early childhood education and care continuum campaign is integrated across our big city. That includes our early Head Start, Head Start, our child subsidy programs, our voter approved and local uh, funded, local sales tax funded pre-K for SA program, our health, parks, and health department activities and programs, 
and our strong partnerships, including our United Way of San Antonio, our P16 Council, and our school districts. We prioritize everything that we've heard about in the last couple of days, and you'll hear more about soon, which is school readiness, school attendance, grade three reading, and summer learning. Our campaign focuses on low-income students. Finally, we are very big about using data to analyze our results in our schools and in our neighborhoods, and we use this information to guide funding decisions. For school readiness, we expanded in a big way with the voter-approved and locally funded Pre-K for SA program that today serves over 4,000 students in our community. We're making extracurricular enrichment accessible through this program and through other programs like San Antonio is our classroom or Micronauts Pre-K program. United Way of San Antonio is leading our local results-based accountability framework with ReadyKid SA. On attendance, we've made good improvements there. Our P16 Council leads the city's attendance efforts called SA Kids Attend to Win. 91% of these students are in low income. We've made some big improvements by responding to the concerns we've heard of the community by providing free transportation to parents and getting the word, about, getting the word out about how important education is for their child. Attendance is improving and school districts are receiving more money that they weren't because of, of uh, low attendance from students. And finally, in summer learning, we have a big effort where 30 organizations are collaboratively working together in what is known as Excel Beyond the Bell. Over 4,800 students are participating in this program in the 2015 school year. And the Bell partners have, have been telling the city and been working with the city to launch several programs this summer. In closing, the city, in collaboration with our partners of the United Way and the P16 Council and our community partners, have developed an integrated early childhood and education care consortium by significant, uh, that is funded by significant public and private dollars. Thank you. Welcome, Kansas City, Missouri. My name is Diana Gonzalez Worthen. I'm with One Community. Our campaign, One Community Reads, Una Comunidad Leyendo. We are partnered with three elementary schools in the Springdale Public School District. We've increased third grade reading proficiency. Okay, I think we are, let's see, we're, yeah, this is, okay. I'll, there we go. Okay. So this um, is Springdale. This is Springdale. Springdale, Arkansas. Yes. Apologies, please. <laughs> okay. Springdale, Arkansas. Okay. Can we start over? You can start over. <laughs> okay. Uh, they, we can, okay. My name is Diana Gonzalez Worthen. I'm with One Community, and our local campaign is called One Community Reads Una Comunidad Leyendo. We are partnered with three elementary schools in the Springdale School District. We've increased third grade reading proficiency by reducing chronic absenteeism, stopping summer learning loss, and enhancing parent community engagement. In partnership with the Arkansas Campaign for Grade Level Reading, Monitor Elementary, uh, Monitor Elementary began uh, with a 19% chronic absenteeism rate and reduced it to 6%. They did this through educating parents in their native language in the importance of good attendance. Predominantly in Springdale, our first native language, um, of course, English, but our second highest population of English learners, Spanish-speaking students and Marshallese-speaking students from the Marshall Islands. They track, monitor, they, they were monitoring attendance, looking for trends and patterns, they established a positive and welcoming school climate with bilingual bicultural staff trained to, to offer customer service Disney World style. We are so glad you are here. How can we help you? This allowed reaching out to parents and getting to the root cause of attendance issues. We also stopped summer learning loss. We reduced this through our summer learning program Feed Your Brain, Alimenta Tu Cerebro, a bilingual family reading program where we read culturally responsive bilingual books 
parents learn reading tips, and then practice them at home through home fun activities versus homework activities. Um, we had a 10% increase from 81% to 89% in the, num in the percentage of students not experiencing summer learning loss. The percentage of third grade students in all three of our schools increased their grade level reading from 35% to 36.5%. We feel that this is through all of our programming, tracking attendance, summer learning programs, and our parents taking leadership action or Padres Tomando Liderazgo en Acción, which is offered in Spanish. Our philosophy is parents have gifts that they bring to the table as they're learning about their children's education. They are the first leaders and teachers in the home. We've been able to strengthen parent school communication by offering such topics as identifying and nurturing your children's talents. We've offered speakers and we've taken field trips. We want them civically engaged, so some of those field trips have been to the mayor's office, meeting the mayor's office, meeting the mayor and its staff, and also visiting the University of Arkansas to learn how they can prepare kids now. Thank you. Now we have Kansas City, Missouri. Good afternoon, my name is Mike English. On behalf of Judy Heater and Jordan Frazier, I'm here representing Turn the Page KC, the city of Kansas City, Missouri, and our mayor, Sly James, who's the founder and board chair for our organization. I'm happy to report that over the last five years, we've made measurable progress. We've increased the percentage of kids reading at grade level by third grade from 33% in 2012 to 53% last year. So we still, we still have a long way to go, but this is a good time to pause and reflect on some of the keys to our success so far. And I've boiled these into three themes. The first one is awareness. So over the past five years, we have talked to everybody in our city about how important reading at grade level is. Uh, in 2012, many, many people did not realize how important it is, but they also didn't realize how few of our kids were reading at grade level. So in this picture, you can see our mayor in the bow tie talking to a barber named Joey, explaining to him how important it is to read uh, by third grade. Joey now hands out free books to all his customers. So awareness has led to activism, which is our second point. Uh, this is a picture of a construction worker taking his lunch hour to read to a child at a local school. This happens now all over the city through a program called Weed to Read, where over 1,000 volunteers take the lunch hour and read to kids. But activism takes other forms as well in our city. Hundreds of thousands of books have been donated to low-income families through Turn the Page and other partner organizations. Uh, powerful business leaders now lobby the state legislature to increase funding for programs like Parents as Teacher, uh, Parents as Teachers, and also Universal Pre-K. Uh, parents and grandparents now read, talk, and play with their kids more regularly. Perhaps most importantly, institutions now actively meet with the leadership of Turn the Page to align their programs, share data, and agree on common goals. So this is, all of this activism has led to our last theme, which is increased opportunity. Uh, I want to just point out three, three trends in our community that, that I think are very important. First, kids now have mo much more opportunity to attend quality summer reading programs. So over the past five years, enrollment in summer reading programs has increased by 400%. Enrollment in preschool is increasing as well. Uh, in, or enrollment in district-based preschool has in, increased by about 25%. And then lastly, access to qualified tutors is increasing. So the picture here is of a literacy lab tutor which is a replication of the Minnesota Reading Corps model. We're gonna have almost 50 of these tutors in our, in our schools this fall. I just wanna close on, with this. Many of you have heard or probably used the quote that prison officials use third grade reading statistics to build more prisons. Well, I wanna flip that on its head. I think in Kansas City, if we can keep our, our foot on the pedal and continue to increase the number of kids that are reading by the end of third grade, I think corporate CEOs are gonna start building more business, more business offices in Kansas City based on the increased number of, of kids that are going to graduate for high school and be prepared for the workforce. Thank you. Dubuque, Iowa, you're on. Thank you to the campaign for grade level reading for this honor. Dubuque is excited to be a finalist for the All-America City Award. Much like the journey a school bus takes to get children to school every day, our campaign has been on a road trip since we launched in 2012. The road has had twists and turns, uphill climbs and bumps, as well as smooth paths and downhill slopes where we gained momentum. 
Through it all, strong partnerships have been at the core of the success that the Dubuque communication community has experienced. When we launched our campaign in 2012 with the Community Foundation serving as the backbone organization, partners convened around the table to continue the journey to improving outcomes for all children. Partners came together and collectively and individually recognized their role in getting all our third graders reading at grade level. We were able to set aside our own agendas for the greater good while staying true to our missions. It was and still is true collective impact in action. Our journey on the school bus started with bumps in the road when we looked at the data and realized kids were being left behind. Our low income and minority students were not achieving at the same rate as their peers. And although overall our students were achieving at a high level, we knew we could do better. The climb uphill was full of learning, learning how our perceptions may have differed from reality, learning best practice models and strategies, learning how research from the campaign could help us shape that strategy in our community. Our Community Solutions Action Plan truly was a community effort and through it we had laid a solid path for the road ahead. As partners went to work to meet the goals we had set, we started to gain some momentum. As I think about the great work that has happened in our community since 2012, a few things stand out to me. Hundreds of students have access to quality summer learning programs, rich in literacy and enrichment opportunities offered by our school di district, local nonprofits, park programs, the library, and many more. These programs all collect data on how their students are progressing. New strategies for responding to absenteeism have led to measurable decreases in chronic absence at our Title I schools. Partnerships between the school district and our local community college has enhanced the pathway to a secondary education in early childhood. 1,117 students across Northeast Iowa received free glasses to help them succeed in the classroom through a partnership with the Campaign and Vision to Learn in 2016 and 2017. As we continue on our road trip, we know that the learning is never done. We will continue to evaluate data to ensure we are headed in the right direction. As we look to update our Community Solution Action Plan in 2017, partners continue to think of innovative ways that we can create the best outcomes for all children in our community. Thank you. And now let's hear from Gulfport, Mississippi. Wow, what an honor to stand before this group today and represent the city of Gulfport. In 2012, we began a journey that we wanted to welcome our children to a new bright future. We heard the voices of our parents who said, what we have isn't working here anymore. We have to do more. And so this coalition came together and we began to look for those research-based, innovative techniques that would allow us to build productive citizens who would be successful in the future years ahead of us. What we found was we had work to do. And so we began by establishing free preschools. We have seven of those that we now fund across our area. We also implemented Dolly Parton Imagination Library so that every child had a book in their hands well before the day they walked into kindergarten. We started to look at parent trainings and we looked at what the needs of our community were in a way that was open to the fact that we hoped we could meet those needs. The results of those were that we had a 30% increase in our students who were ready for kindergarten when they walked in the door after we began these efforts. And what we know is that that learning is continuing, but we also learned that with that, even though our city had won three Paysetter Awards from GLR and had been named a champion for children that the work was only beginning. What we did then was turn to those students who were in kindergarten through third grade and focused on success by eight. And as we did so, we started to implement after school programming, put tutors in the classrooms. We began to have summer learning programs and then we added a third element to elevate the knowledge of our teachers so that they were able to reach those children in a way that was meaningful, no matter which child they were working with. Throughout all of that, we have seen great growth. We have more students that are reading on grade level now than ever before. 
But more than that, we have a concerned community, a community that understands that if you teach me early, you can watch me grow, and that we are there as a support network for all of those moms, offering, offering them things like Vroom, which many of you are familiar with, and now recently Talk To Me Baby platforms that will allow our parents to get a great start as their child's best first teacher. Frankly, I don't think we could have done it without GLR. GLR pushed us and they challenged us, and those of you sitting in this room have supported us and given us knowledge that we didn't have. So right now, I feel very humbled to be standing before you to accept even the acknowledgement that our community is a finalist for an AAC award. We are humbled by the work that you are doing, and to be a member of this group that's called a finalist is only something that we can say thank you for. And now we have Tahoe Truckee, California. Hello, my name is Laura Brown and I am with Tahoe Truckee Reads. Tahoe Truckee, California. We have one school district nestled in the heart of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. It spans three counties, 720 square miles, sits at an elevation of 8,000 feet, and this winter we received a record 60 feet of snow. We have large economic disparities and are isolated from many resources. These are some of the challenges that face our community. And yet, our community is strong. We have a history of coming together and tackling big issues, and that we have. In response to our community's long-standing achievement gap, in 2012, we started Tahoe Truckee Reads and hatched a plan. We are proud that we have had measurable growth in each of the campaign focus areas and have had a 25% increase in reading proficiency for our low-income third graders over the past five years. When we began, only 26% of our low-income third graders were reading at grade level. Based on last year's California State Reading Assessment, 51% of our low-income third graders and 66% of our overall third graders were reading proficiently. Our state assessment, therefore our baseline, did change during this time period, but the new test is said to be more rigorous, so we celebrate these results. In reflecting on our grade-level reading journey, our greatest successes have been with summer learning and attendance. Our school district superintendent is our attendance champion. Through strong, cha through strong messaging and other strategies, chronic absenteeism for kindergarten through third grade students has fallen to 5%, and it is low as 2% at one elementary site. Five years ago, our summer offerings were basically nil. As a result of the campaign, summer is now a hopping time in Tahoe Truckee educationally. Our school district has implemented a four-week school readiness kinder camp. This program runs at the same time as Summer Scholars, which is a targeted program for first through fifth grade students who need additional academic support. We continue to provide our more grassroots neighborhood reading program where teachers go into low-income neighborhoods and mobile home parks to provide additional summer programming. As a community, we've heightened our overall awareness and importance of school readiness, attendance, and summer learning. These messages have been woven into the work of our community nonprofits and partner organizations. We are working together with common language and shared programs and tracking our results with clear impact software. We have made great strides, but recognize we still have work to go and are embracing the journey to get there. Thank you. And now give it up for Ames, Iowa. Hey. Hi, I'm Jean Cressy, and I'm with United Way of Story County. In 2011, a small volunteer-led organization called Raising Readers in Story County invited Ames leaders to come and dream about what Ames would look like as a city of readers. That prompted us to become Ames Reads and join the campaign. We have been very successful along the years in recruiting partners on the local level, the state level, and the national level. United Ways of Iowa successfully uh, 
replicated the Minnesota Reading Corps, now known as Iowa Reading Corps. And we have, uh, in Story County alone, we went from three elementary schools to 12 elementary schools participating this fall. United Way Worldwide joined our campaign as well and invited us to participate in a VISTA program. Across the country, they placed VISTAs working on reading. We had two VISTAs that started that first year, and they were able to start our summer enrichment and meal programs. In 2012, we were feeding about 100 children a day. This last summer, we fed over 700 children in five different locations. <laughs> United Way of Story County also nominated Carolyn Johns as, uh, for United Way Worldwide for the docu-series, The Hero Effect. Uh, that, sh that showcased Carolyn and Raising Readers in Story County, and it will also help us as a community from the online resources inspire others in all of our communities to join our work and help us with what we're doing. In Ames, adults are reading to children on a daily occurrence. United Way of Story County is also part of a funding process called ASSET, we have five funders that are providing over $4 million to human service and education programs to about 90 programs. Ames Reads also has a data sharing agreement with Ames Community School District to help us measure progress on school readiness, chronic absenteeism, summer learning, and overall grade level reading. We are going to take that agreement and use it as a template for getting to the rest of the school districts in Story County, which are six. Today, Ames is more and more looking like what we envisioned six years ago. Physicians are giving, to children, giving children books at the Well Child Checkups. We have 27 little free libraries in neighborhoods, parks, and low-income areas. We have food pantries giving away books, as well as partner agencies. We have summer enrichment programs going to be happening in five different locations. And we have volunteers, as you can see, dressing in costumes to help us promote literacy. As we look toward tomorrow, we are going to expand from Ames Reads to Story County Reads, and we thank the grade level reading for helping us get started. Thank you. Lane County, Oregon, you're on. Hello everyone, my name is Lindsay Hayward and I'm the Director of Education at United Way of Lane County. It's truly an honor to be a finalist and to be here to represent our community. And if I had just one word that describes why we have been so successful in our grade level reading efforts, it would be because of relationships. We often talk about the power that collaboration has in shaping our community. We see it every day as partners come together around a common goal of ensuring children furthest from opportunity are prepared to succeed in school and life. It's all about working together with cross-sector partners in the same box to create systems that are aligned, coordinated, and family-centered. United Way of Lane County, as our lead agency, serves as the backbone supporting organization for the Early Learning Alliance one of 16 hubs across the state. The goal of Early Learning Hubs is to ensure families receive the support they need to become healthy, stable, and, and attached, and their children receive the early learning experiences that they need to, to thrive. So I'd like to highlight two specific examples where we'll, we're seeing significant measurable progress. The first is by working in close partnership with the health sector to track and document common data. Universal developmental screening rates have increased from 28% in 2013 to a whopping 72% in this most recent year. So this has allowed for earlier identification of young children's developmental delays, and more importantly, a connection to robust systems of community resources and referrals. Another example is the implementation and scaling of an evidence-based program called Kids in Transition to School, or KITS, which is focused on improving summer learning and strengthening parent success. Data from the KITS program demonstrate the ability to improve outcomes in children's literacy, self-regulation, and social skills just prior to kindergarten through a 24-session child's 
child readiness groups, and 12 session workshops for parents and families. The KITS program has scaled from serving 40 children at two sites in 2011 to serving 368 children at 24 sites in 2016, and we will continue to expand that number this year. It's exciting for our community to see these examples of population change, but it's also about individual stories of the families and children being impacted, like Jaden in the photo here, who graduated from the KITS program this year, who now have the best possible start for success in school and life. Thank you. Syracuse, New York, go for it. Hi, my name is Joan Royal, and my colleagues and I represent the Literacy Coalition of Onondaga County. So Syracuse, New York has the highest rate of concentrated poverty among blacks and Hispanics out of the nation's 100 largest metropolitan areas. So not such a great thing to be number one for. But it's against this backdrop that a staggering 89% of the Syracuse City School District third graders are not reading on level. The Literacy Coalition of Onondaga County has been working to turn around this community draining trend. We joined forces with the Campaign for Grade Level Reading in 2012. And these stories, these photos are just an example of some of our work. So meet Chol Majak and his wife. They are reading an imagination library book to, with their children. Chol was the first generation of his family to attend school. He immigrated here at age 16 as one of the lost boys of the Su Sudan. When their imagination library books come, their children get really excited. And Chol and his wife always set aside time to read to their family. With over 14,000 little ones now enrolled in our Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, more families than ever are reading together and bonding over their monthly books. We have transitioned from individual neighborhood pilots to now a program that is scaled countywide. We continue our rigorous evaluation of this work and our work has been published in three national peer-reviewed journals. Now meet Jaime Alessia, who officially and enthusiastically jumped into his role as the superintendent of the Syracuse City School District this past March. Now he's been an employee of the district for 34 years, and he's pledged to make boosting literacy rates among our youngest children a priority. We have a close working partnership with the Syracuse City School District, especially their Office of Shared Accountability. School district data is now showing measurable progress in school readiness, attendance, summer learning, and overall grade level reading. And the school district is what we consider a shining example of a strongly engaged community partner. So now meet uh, Talk, Read, and Sing Onondaga. We're thrilled to recently become the 12th Talking is Teaching Talk, Read, Singing community in the country. In partnership with Too Small to Fail, this national media campaign empowers parents to promote early brain and language development in their children, and most of all, to just talk, read, and sing every day. This campaign is led by our Early Childhood Alliance. Our Early Childhood Alliance is truly an extension of the Literacy Coalition's current priorities, and this framework completes and rounds out our local families' support to create healthy and successful children and families. And these are also the core tenets of the Campaign for Grade Level Reading's More Hopeful Futures, which we're a pilot community. Our work with green and healthy homes and work to increase early developmental screenings are examples of efforts addressing health determinants of school readiness. Another thing I want to mention is that Syracuse is very proud to be the first citywide Say Yes to Education community in the country. We see this larger rubric coming together now in our community, and looking back on the last five years as a campaign for grade level of reading community, it's been the foundation that's really helped us on our path forward. Thank you. Wake County, North Carolina. Good afternoon. I'm Sherry Miller with Wake Up and Read. So the story is, what happens when two women get together and bring in organizations from our county to see if there's interest in developing a community action plan? And what has come out of that is Reuben, our reading rooster, a community-wide message that has blanketed the community with read, talk, play, and school every day. What's come out of this is a community collaborative that we fondly call Wake Up, and read. Also a vision for all Wake County students to be inspired, empowered, and equipped to read. 
as well as a leadership team that is representative of 11 members from eight different organizations. We have action teams that are busy doing visionary work, as well as the doers of the work around the three pillars. And then we have a full collaborative that represents over 21 organizations that are diverse and proudly representing the determinants on the bingo board. So um, our second thing that we're really proud of is we're come at this from a collaborative um, standpoint. What can we do that we can't do alone, that we can only do together? So one example of that, out of many that we have, is the collaboration between Marbles Children's Museum Wake County Public Schools, as well as our public libraries, that now provide we weekly opportunities for families in our high poverty areas of Wake County where they are engaged in school readiness play activities. So in our second year together, we decided to move into action with leadership team members from Reach Out and Read, from our Wake Education Partnership, as well as Books Are Magic. And we engaged in um, looking at the data around our book deserts in our county that actually overlap with the food deserts that we have. So we have, we have gone through collecting, since 2013, we have collected over 350,000 books. We annually distribute books to 7,800 children. And in 10 of our highest, most economically disadvantaged schools, every child leaves for the summer with 10 books of their choice. We are kind of really saturated that community. We give 10 books per child in our 20 subsidized child care centers around those areas as well as community centers. We had this year over 150 organizations that were part of the book collection. We have over 30, 300 hours of volunteer time where volunteers from our community have come in to sort and distribute books. Um, we have parent literacy events that run now each evening in the 10 schools the night before the books are distributed in English and Spanish with Mother Read, and it is absolutely wonderful. I will tell you, our data is moving. We're moving the needle, and we couldn't do it without our funders. We couldn't do it without our volunteers. We couldn't do it without our passionate leadership team our, and our Wake Up and Read administrator. Thank you so much. Next up is Worcester, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Kim Davenport, and Worcester is very honored to be here today. Here are the faces of Worcester's children. Coming, coming. They're coming. Coming. They're coming. Hey, all right, here they are. Love this photo. Which three should not succeed? Tough question. In 2012, 59% of Worcester's third grade students were not reading proficiently. That means that three of these children were already on track to fail with a shrinking opportunity to catch up. Unacceptable. In 2015, Worcester Reads launched its campaign to make reading a city priority. Just 20 minutes a day each day would make a difference for children beginning from birth. We collaborated with World Smile Day to launch the message, and each year we celebrate a little bit of Worcester's history as Harvey Ball, the creator of the smiley face, lived and worked in Worcester. And on the first Friday of each October, we connect children, books, and smiles in perfect combination. World Smile Day helps us highlight the joy of sharing, caring, and reading together. Worcester reads, Worcester smiles. When we took a hard look at our community, we realized that we actually had a dwindling number of books available to children. Years of budget cuts had slowly eroded access to books. School libraries were closed, librarians eliminated, and in many cases, parent volunteers were left struggling to keep books circulating. Compounding the issue, shuttered city library branches and shrinking hours literally closed the doors of opportunity. One City, One Library is a community-wide campaign relentlessly focused on restoring children's access to books and professional librarians. A bold campaign built four new community school library branches in elementary schools, one in each quadrant of our city, 
which are available to students and teachers during school days and on weekends and evenings to the community. Worcester also marshaled resources to purchase and put on the road Libby, and later her little sister Lily, as fully functioning mobile libraries that actually go to where children are, schools, early learning programs, summer camps, and public housing sites. The first one City One Library branch opened at Tatnick Magnet Elementary School. Not only did the branch provide immediate access to 5,000 books, but it transformed the very culture of the school with a clarity of purpose on building readers in both mindshare and skill. Today, Tatnick Magnet is seeing results. In three years, the percentage of children reading at or above proficiency increased from 35 to 46%. So where did it begin? Quite simply, the act of reading. Just 20 minutes a day makes a difference. We learned this from studying Kennewick School's efforts in Washington State, and we borrowed from their roadmap. As our city manager highlighted, children make up 20% of our community and 100% of our future. And last but not least for this morning is Delray Beach, Florida. Arg! I'm Joe Gilly. The city of Delray Beach and the great sunshine state of Florida found gold in our hunt for the treasures of reading. Our treasure map tells the story. A small village by the sea, Delray Beach joined the National Call to Action in 2012 and was named an All-America City finalist. We launched our municipal run grassroots campaign. Our ship sailed with a mayor's implementation team, bringing 50 community activists together, pledging to move the bar on attendance, summer reading slide, and grade level reading. Arg, we had storms. 60% 6 of our students lived at or below poverty level. 81% did not have access to summer learning. 36% were not kindergarten ready. 8% missed one month of school a year. 45% did not read on grade level, then that increased to 70% if they attended a Title I school. We took on attendance by launching the Perfectly Punctual campaign. Get to school on time. That was our goal. The campaign helped us ramp up family engagement by creating family fun nights, honoring parents at school ceremonies, and creating an attendance photo wall of fame. Parents were given a leg up with special assistance from interpreters speaking Spanish and Creole. The results, a 68% reduction in low-income children reading chronically absent in our seven elementary schools. At the end of the school year, we sailed right into the summer reading slide. The Journeys Reading Program proved a rigorous academic component to our summer camps. Weekly visits to the Art Center and Library infused art, music, dance, and storytelling into reading. The results in 2012, we started with 60 children at two summer camps. Today, we serve over 1,000 students attending eight summer camps. Based on our data, we have stemmed summer learning loss for five years, and in 2016, we showed a 10% reading gain. Civic engagement was our oars in the water. The mayor's call to action helped to engage school administrators, nonprofits, businesses, and concerned citizens to get on board or walk the plank. Three separate mayor task forces were formed to address our specific areas of need. Measurable progress has allowed us over five years to get $5 million of resources to support our campaign. Delray Beach raised the flag on data collecting. The city established the first ever data sharing agreement with the school district of Palm Beach County. Data helped us to tweak the program annually and was the anchor to extend, the pro, uh, extend programs and raise money. The city of Delray Beach continues to search for gold. Come visit us and stick your toes in our sand and share in our success. Delray Beach found gold reading. Come on, mateys. Let me hear you say ARG on three. One, two, three. ARG. Thank you. So this is only the beginning. These are our 14 finalists. You can hear the passion, the commitment, the relentlessness, and this is how we're going to do it. Please help me thank them all once again. Okay, so we're now going to take a quick break. We're going to come back to this room for the grade level reading champions luncheon, and then we will reconvene at 1.45 for the next group of finalist presentations. Thanks again. <laughs>